Good evening, everyone. As of now, having heart attacks has become very common in our society. Everyone knows at least one person who has died from a heart attack and knows at least five who have undergone angioplasty with stents or bypass surgery. But why? Why have heart diseases become as common as a core for a cold? And why do people simply accept the fact that they will have to do angioplasty at some point in their lives? And why do people say yes to such a high-risk surgery, which could even lead to death. Well, listen closely. This interview can show you how to save your life. It is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Ramasamy. Dr. Ramasamy has a fellowship in clinical cardiology and a PhD in cardio. And most importantly, he can tell you why you can say no to angioplasty, stents, and bypass surgery, and still have a healthy heart. Dr. Ramasamy is an international expert in EECP cardiac technology who has made a huge contribution to the field of cardiology worldwide and has revolutionized the treatment of cardiovascular disease in India. Right now, Dr. Ramasamy has more than 25 ECP heart centers operating under him and in government hospitals. Through his efforts, this new cardiac technology has been included in the medical syllabuses of universities all over India and has even been included in Indian insurance schemes. It should also be noted that this new ECP cardiac technology has been approved by the highly regulated Food and Drug Administration of USA and is now changing the future of cardiac treatment. On my right, I have Dr. Ishanta Siribaddana, who is by profession an IT expert and by passion a medical researcher. He is the chairman of the Java Institute for Advanced Technology in Sri Lanka and has joined hands with Dr. Ramasam in India to educate our fellow Sri Lankans about this new cardiac treatment. In order for all communities in Sri Lanka to understand this important interview, we have decided to con conduct it in a very different manner. Today, everyone can know the answer to this critical question as the interview will be done in English, Sinhala and Tamil. I will conduct the interview with Dr. Ram Sami in English, asking all the questions. He will answer in both English and Tamil. And meanwhile, Dr. Ishanta will translate my questions and his answers to Sinhala. Now that we are all clear, it's time to hear the reasons why you can say no to angioplasty, stents and bypass surgery and still have a healthy heart. Okay. So, Dr. Ramasamy, there have been many new inventions from Europe and USA in particular has been making a huge contribution. There have been Facebook, Google, many gadgets and the innovative possibilities are endless. But in regard to the medical field, many people are still not aware that there are new cardiac technologies. People in Sri Lanka, for instance, they still think the only way to treat heart attack is through angioplasty and stents. But can you tell me why? The USA has decided to look for a new cardiac treatment when they already had these. All right. Thank you very much for your uh, kind introduction. And you're, it's, I'm very happy to be here in this interview to talk about a new concept, to increase the awareness of this new concept in Sri Lanka. First of all, I would like to let you know that why in US they look for a new procedure when they already have a well-established procedure for cardiovascular disease management. So first thing that people should understand is the cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in that not only in developed nation but also in developing nation. Usually before it's an infectious disease is number one but slowly because of the lifestyle changes and the prevalence of diabetes and hypertension, cardiovascular disease is coming as a number one killer in not only in the developed countries and also in the developing countries. In US, I think angioplasty, bypass surgery and medical management, these are all the three cornerstone in management of patients with coronary artery disease, so we call it cardiovascular disease management. And the management is quite complex and in spite of the complex modality we apply for this uh, disease called coronary artery disease, actually there is no cure. So all the treatment which we are providing to these patients are a palliative treatment, not a curative treatment. So this uh, obviously gives you a question then what would you do if you really want to cure the disease? Until today we are talking, absolutely there is no cure for cardiovascular disease. So all the treatment we are providing is just to improve the quality of life and then prevent the chances of getting heart attack 
uh, death or prolong your life. So that is the idea to treat a patient with cardiac disease. Now when I say the treatment which is already in existence, it is not a curative, so the disease as such remains. So a couple of decades ago, the cardiovascular disease is only prevalent in a, in a age group, more than 60 years or more than 65 years. But as our lifestyle changes, the prevalence of diabetes, hypertension, smoking, lack of exercise, all these things keeps on adding up. So what happened is the disease started coming up in the early stage. So even a patient with a 45 years and 50 years, they started getting heart attacks and they get hospitalization for chest pain and then they underwent this procedure called bypass surgery and angioplasty. Now when you undergo this procedure at the earlier phase of the life, let us say 40s and 50s, these treatments, they are not a curative, they are only a palliative treatment to just improve your heart uh, blood supply temporarily. So basically once they have this interventional procedure at the early age, they might have to undergo this procedure again and again. So if you are going to have a, a longevity, let us say around 80 years, if you have a bypass surgery as 50, at least we are looking at repeating the procedure two or three times. Now it has to stop, number one. The medical insurance companies in US is already looking at it and said, we have been spending a lot of money into this patient for treating cardiovascular disease, but all the procedures which, which is done on them is keep repeated, repeated and repeated. So there has to be some procedure which should be cost effective, which should be safe because as I said, if this guy was a 70 years or 80 years need a bypass surgery, automatically the risk goes up and they have to take a high risk to do the procedure. So they need a treatment to have been, to be very safe, effective and should be able to stop the repeat revascularization procedure or this repeat bypass surgery and angioplasty. So that is what they thought at thinking about introducing the treatment called EECP. EECP treatment is very peculiar in, in its action and also in its effectiveness because so far the concept of treating heart disease is if you want to increase the blood supply to your heart muscle then only there are two procedures available. You will be pushed to go for an angioplasty or a bypass surgery. Now, this is the first time the FDA, after some clinical validation and lot of trials, came up and approved a treatment for angina and heart failure because non-invasively, actually without manipulating your coronary arteries or without putting you on a surgical table, they can able to improve your blood supply to the heart muscle in a natural way. So that is what EECP is called a natural bypass. That is how EECP is introduced in US and actually the second important thing is as I said bypass and angioplasty is not a curative. So once you provide the treatment for example if you put a stent that is what is angioplasty means. They open the vessel and they then put a wire mesh so that the open vessel may not close again. So that is called stent. It can be a bare metal stent or a drug eluding stent or biodegradable stent. There are various stents start coming up in the market. But in spite of all these things, many patients is in the due course as a disease progress, this stent may close and this is called stent stenosis or the graft, the bypass surgery they have undergone, they put a graft across the blood vessel and eventually as a time pro process and because these grafts are taken from your leg and from your chest it tends to close again. This is called the closure of this graft, graft occlusion. And when this happens, the patient risk again goes up. So again you have to improve the medical management or you have to perform this highly invasive procedure again. So taking into all this into consideration, cost effectiveness, safety, I think EECP was introduced into the market of US. Oh, USA certainly has done a huge part in treating cardiovascular patients in the past few years then. Yes. But doctor, um, in Sri Lanka we also have a Tamil community so it would be extremely helpful if you could explain your whole answer and also the question in Tamil so that our Tamil viewers can understand this important Okay, thank you. See, uh, since basically I am from Tamil Nadu, I think I can speak in Tamil too in a clear way. Adhavadu, bypass angioplasty, adhu matru illama marundhukal la irukkum boludhu. US ல வந்து எப்படி ஒரு நியூ ப்ரொசீஜர் அதாவது வந்து சர்ஜரியும் ஆஞ்சியோபிளாஸ்டியும் இல்லாமல் இருதய நோயை குணப்படுத்துவதற்கான ஒரு சிகிச்சை முறையை எப்போது அறிமுகப்படுத்தினார்கள் அதுதான் கொஸ்டின் அதுக்கு ஆன்சர் என்னன்னா யூஎஸ்லேயும் அதாவது வந்து பைபாஸ் சர்ஜரி ஆஞ்சியோபிளாஸ்டி மெடிசன் இது எல்லாமே கார்டியாக் டிசீஸ் பேஷண்ட்ஸுக்கு கொடுக்கறது 
அதாவது வந்து ஒரு இருபது முப்பது வருடங்களுக்கு முன்னாடி வந்து கார்டியாக் டிசீஸ் வந்து நிறைய வந்து கிடையாது இந்தியாவில் இன்ஃபெக்ஷஸ் டிசீஸ் மலேரியா டயோரியா கால்ரா அதை மாதிரி இன்ஃபெக்ஷஸ் டிசீஸ் தான் கில்லர் மேஜர் நம்பர் ஒன் கில்லர் ஆனால் ஸ்லோவாக இப்போ என்ன ஆகிடுச்சுன்னா கார்டியாக் டிசீஸ் வந்து இந்தியாவில் மட்டும் இல்லை எல்லா டெவலப்பிங் நேஷன்லேயும் வந்து அதிகமாகுது இப்போது வந்து இந்த இன்ஃபெக்ஷஸ் டிசீஸை விட ஹார்ட் டிசீஸால் சாவறவங்க தான் ரொம்ப அதிகம் அப்படி இருக்கும் பட்சத்தில் வந்து பைபாஸ் சர்ஜரி ஆஞ்சியோபிளாஸ்டி மட்டும்தான் நமக்கு ட்ரீட்மெண்ட்டு நமக்கு வந்து இருதய நோய் வந்ததுன்னா நம்ம எதிர் வந்து ஒரு பைபாஸ் சர்ஜரி பண்ணணும் இல்லைனா ஆஞ்சியோபிளாஸ்டி சர்ஜரி இது ரெண்டு தான் ஆப்ஷன்றதை வந்து இப்போ சேஞ்ச் பண்ண முடியும் ஏன்னா வந்து இப்போ யூஎஸில் வந்து புதுசான ஒரு சிகிச்சை முறை அதாவது இஇசிபி என்ற புதிய சிகிச்சை முறையை வந்து அறிமுகப்படுத்திட்டு இருக்காங்க அதுக்கு காரணம் என்னென்னா நீங்களே கேட்கலாம் இல்லை டாக்டர் ஏற்கனவே வந்து சர்ஜரி ஆஞ்சியோபிளாஸ்டி மெடிசன் இவ்வளவும் இருக்குது அதுதான் இப்போ எல்லா இடத்துலையும் ட்ரீட் பண்ணிகிட்டு இருக்காங்க அதுவே நல்லா இருக்கும் பொழுது எதுக்காக இன்னொரு புது சிகிச்சை முறையை வந்து யூஎஸில் வந்து இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க அதை ஏன் நம்ம வந்து ஸ்ரீலங்கா இந்தியாவிலலாம் இப்போ பிரபலப்படுத்திக்கிட்டு இருக்காங்கன்னு நீங்கள் கேட்கலாம் அதுக்கு காரணம் என்னென்னா இருதய நோய் ஒரு தடவை இருதய நோய் வந்துருச்சுன்னா அதை வந்து குணப்படுத்த முடியாது அதாவது வந்து தெர் இஸ் நோ கியூர் அந்த இருதய நோய் உள்ளவர்களுக்கு வந்து என்ன பிரச்சனைனா இரத்த குழாயில் அடைப்பு ஏற்படுறதுனால இருதயத்துக்கு இரத்த ஓட்டம் சரியாக செல்லாது அப்படி இருதயத்துக்கு சரியாக இரத்த ஓட்டம் செல்லாததுனால இந்த பைபாஸு ஆஞ்சியோபிளாஸ்டி போன்ற சிகிச்சை முறையை வந்து பண்ணுறாங்க ஆஞ்சியோபிளாஸ்டின்றது ஒன்றும் ஒரு காம்ப்ளிகேட்டட் ப்ரொசீஜர் கிடையாது என்ன பண்ணுவாங்கன்னா ஒரு பலூன் அதை வந்து உங்கள் வெசல் எந்த இடத்துல அடைப்பு இருக்கோ அந்த பலூனை வந்து விரிவடைய செய்வாங்க அப்படி விரிவடைய செய்யும்போது என்ன ஆகும்னா வெசல் டைலைட் ஆகிடும் அப்படி டைலைட் ஆன பிறகு அது திருப்பி க்ளோஸ் ஆகாமல் இருக்கிறதுக்கு வந்து ஒரு ஒயர் மெஷை வந்து அந்த வெசல் உள்ள வைப்பாங்க அதுதான் வந்து ஸ்டென்ட்டு அப்புறம் வந்து இந்த பைபாஸ் சர்ஜரின்றது வந்து இருதயத்தை ஓப்பன் பண்ணி எந்த வெசலில் அடைப்பு இருக்கோ அந்த வெசலை வந்து இன்னொரு வெசல் காலில் இருந்தோ இல்லைனா உங்களோட உங்களோட செஸ்ட்டில் இருந்தோ ஒரு வெசலை எடுத்து அதை வந்து பைபாஸ் பண்ணுவாங்க அதுதான் நம்ம பைபாஸ் சர்ஜரின்னு சொல்கிறோம் இப்போ இந்த ஆஞ்சியோபிளாஸ்டியும் பைபாஸ் சர்ஜரியும் பண்ணிட்டால் வந்து இருதய வகை வந்து கியூர் ஆகிடுச்சு அப்படின்னு நினைக்கிறது வந்து ஒரு வெறி வெறும் ஒரு தவறான காரியமாகும் ஏன்னா வந்து இந்த பைபாஸும் ஆஞ்சியோபிளாஸ்டியும் வந்து டெம்பரரியாக உங்கள் ர இருதயத்துக்கு ரத்த ஓட்டத்தை அதிகப்படுத்த முடியும் அவ்வளோதான் அதனால் வந்து கியூர் கிடையாது உங்களோட இருதய நோயினால் என்னென்னா உங்களுக்கு அந்த அடைப்பு ஏற்படுத்துறது அந்த அடைப்பு ஏற்படுத்துவதை வந்து இந்த பைபாஸோ ஆஞ்சியோபிளாஸ்டியோ கியூர் பண்ணவே முடியாது அப்படி அந்த பைபாஸ் ஆஞ்சியோபிளாஸ்டி பண்ணாலும் அந்த ஸ்டென்ட்டு போட்ட இடத்துலையோ கிராஃப்ட் போட்ட இடத்துலையோ மறுபடியும் அடைப்பு வரலாம் அதனால் வந்து ஒரு அஞ்சு வருஷமோ பத்து வருஷமோ அந்த இடத்துல அடைப்பு வந்த பிறகு மறுபடியும் இருதய நோய் வரும் பொழுது அவங்களுக்கு மறுபடியும் சர்ஜரியோ ஆஞ்சியோபிளாஸ்டியோ பண்ணும் பொழுது ரிஸ்க் வந்து ரொம்ப அதிகமாகிடுது அதனால தான் இந்த மாதிரி பேஷண்ட்டுக்கு வந்து எந்த ரிஸ்க்கும் இல்லாமல் அதே நேரத்தில் நிறைய செலவும் செய்யாமல் ஒரு சிகிச்சை முறையை கொண்டு வர்றதுக்கு தான் இந்த இசிபி என்ற சிகிச்சை முறையை கொண்டு வந்திருக்காங்க இந்த இசிபி சிகிச்சை முறை வந்து ஒரு டிஃப்ரெண்ட்டான ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் ஏன்னா வந்து இதில் சர்ஜரி கிடையாது இதில் வந்து பேஷண்ட் வந்து ஹாஸ்பிட்டலில் போய் அட்மிட் பண்ண வேண்டிய தேவையில்லை இது எவ்ரி டே ஒரு 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 மணி நேரம் பண்ணாலே போதும் இதன் மூலம் இருதயத்தோட ரத்த ஓட்டத்தை விட இருதயத்தின் ரத்த ஓட்டத்தை குறைச்சல்லிருந்து மிக அதிகமாக ரத்த ஓட்டத்தை ஏற்படுத்தக்கூடிய வாய்ப்பை வந்து இந்த சிகிச்சை முறை வந்து வழங்குகிறது தேங்க்யூ டாக்டர் டாக்டர் இஷாந்த் குட் யூ பிளீஸ் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் டாக்டர் ராமசாமிஸ் ஆன்சர் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ ஹிஸ் கொஸ்டின் இன் சிங்கல ஸோ ஆ சிங்கல் யூஸ் கம்யூனிட்டி இன் ஸ்ரீலங்கா கேன் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் தெருவிக்கு பசுவே லோகே விவிதாட்சணையன் வைத்திய வித்யா சக அனுக்கணையம் சேஷ்டேகம் அலுத்தே தேவாநிர்மாணம் சுயாதாரம் இதனட் ஹர்தரோக சந்தான பலவினி விதியதமாய் மெடிக்கல் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் தேக்க என்ஜிஓ மெடிக்கல் பலவீன கிரமேதமாய் மெடிக்கல் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் தேக்கதமாய் என்ஜிஓ பிளாஸ்டி ஹரஹா ஸ்டேண்ட் கத்தல் கரணி தூங்கினீகதமாய் பைபாஸ் சர்ஜரி மே கிரம துணம் அவருது கானத்திசே அமெரிக்காவேத்துலு ரட்டவல்லுல பிரயோஜனட்ட கனுனத் இட தெஹாதி இல்ல தவத் அலு பிரதிகார சுமவேதிய ஸ்வயன் அமெரிக்காவட்ட சித்தவுனி எக்ஸ ஜனபாதேட் சித்தவுனி ஐ கேனீகதமாய் ஏ பிரச்சனை மூலிமா டாக்டர் ராமசாமிங்க இதில் டாக்டர் ராமசாமிக்கு மேற்கட்ட விசேஷ ஆசிரிய உத்தரவுனி அது வேணப்பட்டது
මේ හැම එකේම නම්බර් 1 කිලර් වෙලා තියෙන්නේ හාඩ් ඩිසීස්. එතන මේ හෘද රෝග කියන්නේ. එතන මෙහෙම වෙන්න හේතුවක් තියෙනවා. ඒක තමයි අද වර්තමාන ලෝකයේ මිනිසුන්ගේ තියෙන ස්ට්‍රෙස් එක. ඒත් එක්කම ආහාර පැවැත්ම ඊට පස්සේ කොළ වැඩ කරන දේවල් මේවත් එක්ක මේ රෝගය වෙනදට වඩා පැතිරෙන ප්‍රමාණය වැඩි වෙලා තියෙනවා. එතන මේ පැතිරීමත් එක්ක ඉස්සර මේ රෝගය ආසා මේ රෝගය වැළඳුනේ සාමාන්‍යයෙන් අවුරුදු 60න් විතර වගේ එහා අයට. එතකොට බයිපාස් සර්ජරි එකක් හරි ස්ටෙන්ට් එකක් හරි දැම්මාම ඒගොල්ලන්ට අවුරුදු 20ක් විතර මේක මැනේජ් කරගෙන අවුරුදු 80ක් විතර ඉන්න පුළුවන්. නමුත් අද වෙනකොට මේ රෝගය අවුරුදු 40ක් 50ක් වෙනකොට මේ රෝගය වැළඳෙන්න පටන් අරගෙන තියෙනවා. එතන මේ රෝගයට ප්‍රතිකාරයක් විදිහට අපි හිතමු ඇන්ජියෝප්ලාස්ටි සැක්තමක් කරලා ඉවරලා ස්ටෙන්ට් එකක් මේකට දාන්න. ස්ටෙන්ට් එකක් දැම්මා ඊට පස්සේ මේ ස්ටෙන්ට් එක ටික දවසක් යනකොට මේ ස්ටෙන්ට් එක වැහෙනවා. වැහෙනවා කියලා කියන එක එක ස්ටෙන්ට් ස්ටෙන්ටෝසිස් කියන රෝගී තත්වයක් හැටියට එක හඳුනනවා. මේක වැහුණා ඊට පස්සේ ඊට පස්සේ ආපහු ආයෙ ස්ටෙන්ට් දාන්න. එහෙම නැත්නම් ආයෙ බයිපාස් සර්ජරි එකට යනවා. ඒතර අවුරුදු 80ක් යනකොට මේක කරන වාර දාන විශාල ප්‍රමාණය. තුන් පාර හතර පාරක් වෙන්න පුළුවන්. ඒක ඉන්ෂුරන්ස් කම්පැනි වලට මහා විශාල ප්‍රශ්නයක්. මේක පේෂන්ට් කෙනෙක් මැනේජ් කරන විශාල කොස්ට් එකක් තියෙනවා. ඊට පස්සේ ඒකට වඩා මේ දෙවෙනි පාර තුන්වෙනි පාර මේ සැක්කම් වලට යනකොට ඒක තියෙන රිස්ක් එක මරණයට තියෙන රිස්ක් එක ඉතාම වැඩි. ඉතින් ඒක නිසා අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම ඇමරිකාවට සහ එක්සත් ඇමරිකාවට එක්සත් රාජධානියට සිද්ධ වෙනවා එක්සත් ජනපදයට සිද්ධ වෙනවා මේ වෙනුවෙන් අලුත් ක්‍රමවේදයක් ස්වයන් ඉතින් මේ වෙනුවෙන් ස්වයන් ක්‍රමවේදය හොයන්න වෙන්නේ ඒගොල්ලෝ පැහැදිලිවම දන්නවා මේ දැනට පවතින ප්‍රතිකාර ක්‍රම තුනම පැලි පැලියේටිව් ට්‍රීට්මන්ට් පැලියේටිව් ට්‍රීට්මන්ට් කියලා කියන්නේ ඒක යම් කාලයක් ඒ රෝගියාව පවත්වා ගැනීම සඳහා කරන ට්‍රීට්මන්ට් එහෙම නැතුව මේක සුව කිරීම සඳහා තියෙන ක්‍රම තුනක් නෙවෙයි කියන එක මේ වෛද්‍යවරු හොඳටම දන්නවා එතකොට අනිත් අවශ්‍යතාවය තමයි මේක මේ පවත්වා ගැනීම සඳහා තියෙන ක්‍රමවේදයක් ප්‍රතිකාර ක්‍රමයක් නෙවෙයි මේක සුව කරන්න පුළුවන් ක්‍රමවේදයක් මොකක් හරි හොයන්න ඕනේ කියන අවශ්‍යතාවයේ රටේ ඇති වෙනවා. ඉතින් මේක සඳහා තමයි මේ අලුතෙන් හඳුන්වා දෙන EECP කියන ප්‍රතිකාර තාක්ෂණය හොයා ගන්නේ. එතකොට මේ ප්‍රතිකාර තාක්ෂණය හොයා ගන්නත් පස්සේ ඒ තාක්ෂණය හරහා විශේෂ හැකියාවක් ලැබෙනවා මේ ප්‍රතිකාර කරන වෙලාවේදී මේ හෘදයේ තියෙන ආටරිස් එහෙම නැත්නම් අපි කියනවා රුධිර ධමනි අවහිර වෙච්ච රුධිර ධමනි බයිපාස් කරලා ඒ කියන්නේ අපි ඒකට කියනවා නැචුරල් බයිපාස් එකක් කරලා කියලා ඒ කියන්නේ තියෙන පෝල් ඇපිටස් කියලා කියනවා ඒ ප්‍රධාන ධමනි වලට අමතරව තියෙන ධමනි ඒවා විශාල කරලා ඒවා හරහා රුධිරය වැඩිපුර යවලා හාට් මසල්ස් වලට අපි රුධිර ධාවනය වැඩි කරවන්න මේ අලුත් තාක්ෂණය හරහා හැකියාව ලැබෙනවා එතකොට මේ අලුත් තාක්ෂණය කරන ක්‍රමවේදයේ තියෙන විශේෂත්වය තමයි මේක නන් ඉන්වේසිව් ට්‍රීට්මන්ට් එකක් විදිහට තමයි මේක හැඳින්නේ නන් ඉන්වේසිව් කියලා කියන්නේ මේක ඇඟ ඇතුළට කිසිදු උපකරණයක් අවයවයක් ඇතුළත් කරන්න නැතුව බාහිරව කරන ක්‍රමවේදයක් සරහා හරහා තමයි මේ හාට් මසල්ස් වලට බ්ලඩ් සර්කියුලේෂන් එක එහෙම නැත්නම් රුධිර ධාවනය වේගවත් කරලා වැඩි කරන්නේ ඉතින් මේකේ උත්තරේ හැටියට ඩොක්ටර් රාමසාමිගේ ආසරක වෙන්නේ මේ රෝගීන්ගේ ජීවිත කාලය වැඩි කරන්න රිස්ක් එක අඩු කරන්න වියදම අඩු කරන්න වැඩි කාලයක් මේ රෝගීන් ජීවත් කිරීමේ අවශ්‍යතාවය වෙනුවෙන් තමයි මේ අලුත් තාක්ෂණය වෛද්‍ය තාක්ෂණය ලෝකෙට හඳුන්වා දෙන්නේ. Thank you Dr. Shanta for that exact explanation.